In this example, we'll see how to use three-dimensional pathing arrays to generate multiple lighting poles, as we see here, along a three-dimensional polyline that serves as the center line of the road. We'll see how the associative behaviors work in this case and what the parameters are we can use to modify the array. Let's dig in. To create your path array, first make sure you have the object you wish to array, in this case your lighting fixture, the curve that will sweep this object along, and then go up here to the ribbon and select the pathing array. You'll now select the lighting fixture, followed by the pathing curve. As you can see here, the array will be generated, but probably not in exactly the way or the spacing that you had had in mind. So now what we can do is go to the ribbon and start to override some of these controls to get the dimensional parameters in here that we would actually want to have. Now this will be a associative array as all the other array elements that we've looked at. And you'll notice here along in the ribbon that we have the ability to control parameters such as in this case, the Z direction, making sure that the lighting fixtures are always pointed up. If I turn the Z direction control off, you can actually see how the lighting fixtures are now held orthogonal to the surface of the road, rather than going straight up and being plumb leveled, which would be the normal case for something in construction. So we can see that it's now very easy to use controls to modify the pathing array. So the methodology here is not unlike what you've learned in polar and rectangular arrays, just a few different controls to be cognizant of 